The first way to this satisfaction is contemplating the Word of God. We don't take the words Our Lord seriously enough. The words Our Lord contain medicine. It has the iron for this anemia. It gives hope and it gives security. The problem is that the dose should be for two hours, but we take it for just 10 minutes a day. Make it an hour so someone doesn't get upset with me. We take 10 minutes. It's as if you take a dose of iron once a week and the anemia you have needs a dose once a day. Of course, you'll remain anemic. You won't get better. I get dizzy, doctor. Well, of course you do. You're not taking the correct treatment. You tell me, I read the Bible. But what did you read? For just five minutes? You're not satisfied. You didn't eat enough. You didn't get a chance for God's word to enter the earth and be planted and grow and bear fruit. You didn't give it a chance. You tell me, I sit in front of the television for three, four hours. Are you satisfied? Scary movies took your security away from you. Will romantic movies give you love? Contemplating God's words is the first treatment to be satisfied. For us servants, we don't have an excuse. We want to tell people, come and taste. But are you going to tell someone to taste and you yourself have not eaten well? We need to be in a level of satisfaction that is higher than the others in order to convince them. We won't be able to be convinced that life with God is beautiful if we're not satisfied. However, if you yourself are anxious and worried and scared and want security and want love and you can't find it, then what are you going to say to others? What are, what are you overflowing with? You'll tell them to read the Bible. They'll look at you wondering what the Bible did for you. It doesn't appear it's impacted you. However, there's a difference when one speaks and it appears that he is happy and nothing bothers him and he's not scared. This makes a huge difference. I remember one time I was doing a visitation for someone sick. While we were there, the late Bishop Athanasios, the Metropolitan of Beni Suif, also came. This man was a saint. He was in his last days. He had cancer in his liver and the sick man was one of his spiritual children for many years. So he went to go visit him, even though the Metropolitan was far sicker than this spiritual child was. He was supposed to rest. He sat with him and made him laugh. One felt that they were visiting with the most relaxed and happiest person. It was as if the whole world was under his feet. Sitting in his presence was beautiful. His words were wonderful and he was easygoing and happy. He knew that he was going to heaven within a matter of weeks. Truly two or three months following this visit, he went to heaven. However, he was in a different world. He was truly satisfied. To encourage us, he would always tell me, Why don't you tell us something, Abuna? Afterwards, when we stood to pray, he said the litanies of the sixth hour from memory because he loved to pray from the Agbeya. To him, it wasn't about something he had to do. He was speaking with our Lord. I saw someone who was satisfied. He had liver cancer, but he did not have anemia. Spiritually, he did not have anemia of love or anemia of security. He had all the security and all the love. He was happy and assured, and all the world was under his feet. You would see this same situation with Pope Shenouda at the end of his life. Even though there were illnesses and problems in the church, he would laugh like children do, and he had a strange peace about him. He was happy with God, even when people were tiring him with things. The whole world was beneath his feet. These types of people know how to be satisfied. They know to eat. They will never limit their spiritual food. We are the ones who are lacking in this regard. For us, the Bible is in our house. We read a page in five minutes and close it. My son, eat. What's strange is that for us as fathers and mothers, especially the mothers, if you have young children, all day long mothers say two words in Egypt, either study or eat. It appears that these are the only words that are said in Egypt. These words frustrate the children as it seems that they don't eat or study. We keep saying eat and study, and in the end, that's not what's truly beneficial. Why not tell your children to eat spiritual words? Why don't you tell yourself to be nourished spiritually? Let's think about this in a practical way. Let's increase the time we spend reading the Bible. Time is like a dose or two or three. It will matter. You tell me, I take the medicine. Yes, but you don't take enough. Because of this, you're not eating enough. You are not satisfied. However, if your mind is filled with verses and promises and stories of the Bible, living with God and His Word, you will find your mind has changed and your heart will be calm. You will find 
that the world, instead of encroaching on you, it will now be far from you. It's the same world, the same problems, the same issues, but there's a difference between it being heavy to hold and affecting you deeply versus it being farther away from you. This distancing happens through God's Word. Also, the food from God's Word doesn't just come from reading, it comes from reading and praying. I wish, O oh Lord, to do what you are saying to do. This week, I read from Judges. I kept thinking of every person in Judges and the pride they had. Every time I'd read about someone, I would fear for myself. The words in the Bible turned into prayer. O oh Lord, things started out well and in the end, things ended wrong. They made a golden calf and lost the good things that he had done for them. Protect us, O oh Lord, from the things like this. Even if someone is just reading and speaking with God repeatedly, it will be as if they were in heaven and they will be happy. They will not be worried about anything. Everything will unfold as it should. The Lord said, Be like children and you will find the path is very easy. We don't know how to be like children because His words aren't in our ears. His words don't fill our minds and hearts. However, if someone were like a child, they will be carried. The one who is carried doesn't think about anything. They aren't worried about anything. We're the ones who are preoccupied and worried and keep fighting with ourselves even before we fight with others. All day there are fights in our minds and fights with others. When we read, we need to also be focused. Every day there are words the Lord wants to tell us. At the very least, He wants to tell you He loves you or that He is with you. Every day. But you are not listening. Can you imagine if tonight, while you were praying, you heard the Lord's voice telling you, Don't be afraid. I am with you. For how long would you be happy? You heard a voice from heaven, like the Jews when they heard the Lord's voice from the mountains, and just like Saul when he heard the Lord calling for him, and Samuel also. I tell you, tonight the Lord will tell you with a voice you can hear, Oh, whatever your name is, don't be afraid. I will be with you. You could contemplate this for a month and would be soaring from happiness. People will come to you and ask, is there a problem? Is there an issue? To you, these are small words. Do you need to hear these words with your ears? The Lord doesn't lie. He tells you these same words in the Bible every day, but you're not paying attention. You're not paying attention to these words that they are for you. There is also the idea of wanting to know more when you read a passage and say, Lord, help me to understand what you want to say. Tell me why these people made a mistake or how they did the right thing. Why were they happy to live with you? Those who continually ask God will be answered by Him. There is no way someone will keep asking God to hear His voice and He will say no, or for someone to ask God to give them relief and He doesn't, or to make them happy and He doesn't, or to remove something bothersome and He doesn't. However, we don't like to continually ask. We complain and plead with the world and keep asking people for things and put effort into so much, except for when it comes to prayer and the Bible, we become hesitant. Imagine that you spent a day where the Bible was on your mind all day. One time I met an elderly person who wasn't able to go to church often. I assumed that he was frustrated that he couldn't go to church. In this situation, one feels bad that they would once go to church and serve and now they are unable to move easily. I found that he was very happy. I asked him, how are you happy? He told me, I wake up very early and open the Bible, I read it for an hour and then I spend three or four hours in contemplation. In the afternoon I read for another hour and spend the rest of the day in contemplation. Sometimes I forget to eat, I eat late. As long as he is living, his mind is always on the Bible. When you sit with him, you feel that he is truly not in the world. Christ said, The kingdom of God is within you. This elder, elderly man has already touched heaven. He is living in a different universe. But what about his health and food? And do people check up on him or not? All of this is small to him. This talk is far from his mind because he is living in the Bible. 